Welcome, Justina, to the Wholesome Crypto Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me here today. Yeah, of course. And um, yeah, I've looked at what you're doing, what you're working on, and uh, the Bitcoin Foundation uh, for, for Women. And I love to learn all about that. But before getting started and all that, I still want to know more about you and how you even got into Bitcoin and crypto and blockchain and the whole story behind that. So where was Justina before even hearing about Bitcoin? So uh, living in Ottawa, and that's where I learned about Bitcoin. Uh, some of my friends uh, happened to own a Bitcoin ATM. And, uh, you know, they were always talking about it. And they were talking about using it for sending money. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, they forced me down <laughs> and had to watch a couple of documentaries about it. And, you know, I didn't really get into it that much for a long time. It was just always like on the periphery, yeah. you know, and then I, um, we all ended up going to a conference in Atlantic mm -hmm. city. I don't, I think like three years ago or more than that, something like that. And, uh, and I was like, okay, there's very little female representation here. And so, you know, I kind of had the idea, but didn't really do anything about it. I mean, back then I like, there was still not enough regulations about this whole topic. So I didn't even have my name on my business card. Like I just had my Twitter yeah. symbol and, uh, you know, I didn't even have my, like, it was so <laughs> funny. Um, but I wanted to meet the people who were in the space. So I went, I met them. And then one of them, Ken Bozak was actually coming oh, to Ottawa. For I know Ken conference. Bozak, yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. So something's happening in Ottawa. And then I met more people who were in the space. And then I went to the Untraceable conference in Toronto. And after doing that, you know, people were literally coming to me and saying like, you need to, you need to do like a non-for-profit and, and start getting more women into the space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, why not? You know, I never even thought about it. Never like it was never like an idea that I that I conceptualized uh, <laughs> what, before. It just sort of. Came. What were you doing before uh, as a, a profession, a career? So I mean, I I still uh, work full time for the government actually, mm -hmm. and so I've been doing that for a long time. And then I started it as like. A, yeah, like just doing it on the side. And I, my first event was sold out. Nice. And then the city of Ottawa came to me, Invest Ottawa. Uh, there are sponsors. And then we did a, an event uh, in Montreal with a, also a startup incubator of Montreal. So I ended up working with incubators, um, you know, that help entrepreneurs get started off the ground, do the events. And then I started speaking at events and going to <laughs> it's events. It's all happening so fast, right? And yeah, and then now, uh, you know, I I still do that, and now it's growing, and we're talking to universities, we're writing research, uh, you know, I've partnered, I'm partnering um, with a American company called SITTEC, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to be doing some work on governance and the Polkadot ecosystem, so there's a lot, there's a lot on the go, I'm also working on like a uh, starting up a gaming guild what? called yeah so i mean <laughs> it's a lot of startups you never know you never know you never know but was that always like in your up. um horizon did you always feel like you had to be an entrepreneur was the entrepreneur spirit in you the whole time or is this kind of happening as as of now well i did i was part of the entrepreneur club okay. at university my dad was always an entrepreneur and so I guess I had the entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> nice. spirit. You know, like I bought my first airplane ticket when I was 15. Like I saved my money and then I went to my dad and I'm like, here's enough money for me to fly to Europe. Here's $500. Why don't you use your visa so like I can have my ticket, you mm -hmm. know? Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, I've, I studied business. I've always wanted to do business, but I just didn't think like I would do it like this. You know, it's like, it's a humbling moment for me, you know what I mean, in a way too, because when you're doing uh, non for profit work um, and you're, you know, part of it is like volunteering and part of it is just like going to these conferences and doing all these things, 
it's it's a humbling experience because you know you you uh you interact with all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life you you never really know and that's funny in life you know a lot of us try to plan things mm-hmm. out like i never planned this but it, this is what ended up being a need in the market so i did it and then i didn't you know while i was doing it and i started working with justin goldston who's like a professor at penn state university he we just happened to vibe well together so he's like why don't we work on other projects and i was like <laughs> okay so then i'm writing a white paper which you know that didn't come to me and then i brought him a student from mcgill and they're writing the uh one of the first academic papers on the metaverse oh, wow. did i plan that no, <laughs> no. but it just came to play because i mean that's the thing that's a beautiful thing about what you're doing too is you're building an amazing network that's exactly it. So at the end of the day, some of the opportunities end up, end up coming onto your lap because you're working hard. And I think that's what it's about. I mean, I care about the price like everybody else, but you at the to. same time, I care more about building. You know, like when the market goes down, like I don't care because I, I was doing this before and I'm doing this now. I'm building. So for me, the focus is what can I build in the community? How can I community build? How can I educate? What can I do better? Now? Exactly. That's like the, the most difficult thing about crypto now, especially being on Twitter. It's just all you're seeing is what the prices of Ethereum, what the prices of Bitcoin is and mm-hmm. NFTs. But there's so much more behind the scenes that's happening. And I feel like you know we're missing that, and especially in terms of education. We're missing that too. And I'm glad you're doing what you're doing now. So then, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so like there's a lack of developers. Some people who are working like on Ethereum and Solidity, they're making like six hundred thousand dollars a year, right? So yeah, well, if you're doing private work and you're not just working for one company, that could be your salary, right? Um, so I think the the thing is there's a gap between current education Mm -hmm. and what the market needs. And so if you have that kind of a split, you're gonna see people getting paid all kinds of money for doing all kinds of things. So, you know, I think then education is still important. So I would like to work in it. I, I you know, uh, Justin and I are going to be building um, developer courses with like an inclusion mm-hmm. lens. That's my goal for 2022. So we want to teach people about Substrate, how to run their node. Uh, we have, um, that's what we're working on together. So that's my plan. And then uh, working on the Guild DAO. So yeah it's uh it's a lot of work yeah it is <laughs> but you know i'm excited and then Good. so what do you uh is finding the most exciting about creating a dao because that's kind of new this whole dao scene i mean it's creating a company and you have to also i guess work with two different entities which is the dao and also the local or federal government um so what like interesting things have you found out about creating a DAO that maybe someone like me that's never created one before needs to know? I'm still in the process. I I think we need to do another episode (laughs) on that. So don't hold me on that. I still run as a registered Canadian Mm non-for-profit, but when I get to that stage, I'll gladly talk to you about it. From what I personally know now about DAOs, uh, you know, decentralized autonomous organization, I think it's just completely changing the business mm-hmm. model. Uh, you know, you're asking someone to create a smart contract and then you may need a multi-signature uh, wallet to pass transactions. So, you know, it could be something like, okay, I don't have enough money to buy this NFT. So why don't we pull our resources together? But in order to transact with the wallet, this is what you need. So what you again need is a developer. And so that's the demand for the developers and depends on what network you want to have it. Most of them are currently being done on Ethereum. So you're still looking at high gas fees and things like that. So I think it's also like, how do we manage accessibility and a system and then like finding someone to build it? I mean, you're probably going to have to pay them also in Ethereum. So I think what I can tell you is for the moment, I think there's a lot of shift happening in the space as people are building towards ETH 2.0, as other competitors are coming into the market. Uh, I'm looking at the evolution myself. So 
the legal aspect of it as well is yeah. tricky. So that's why I'm saying, hold <laughs> on. Uh, it's a conversation I have to have. Um, yeah, it's a lot more to figure with out. With the lawyers, right? Yeah, something I'm working on. But uh, but what I would say is I think the, the education side of having uh, an educational DAO in the future will be the ability, you know, to work internationally, the ability to have involvement and be decentralized and not really have, you don't have a boss mm -hmm. if you have a DAO, basically. You need certain people to approve something, but it creates a, a more of a matrix system, I would say. So I think it's just changing how we do business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know a lot of, uh, I guess I never experienced uh, using crypto in Canada or know of someone who has used crypto in Canada because I'm an American. Uh, is there anything that's kind of, I guess, you know, the, I guess the regulations are, regulations are a little bit different. And you said that you first heard about Bitcoin with uh, your friends' ATMs. How has that evolution been in Canada? Is it becoming more accepted, or is it? I think mm -hmm. so. I think so. The regulations are like we have two ETFs on the Canadian stock exchange. I think there's more coming in. I think definitely there will probably be more interoperability even with our banking system. I think it's just getting to that phase where the regulators are catching up to this, to realizing it's something they'll have to integrate into the system. So I think on that aspect, it's definitely coming and being like, even the taxation rules have been amended, you know, like how do you count yeah. it? How do you Stop. move it? Uh, there's there's places that before um, I used to I did like a, a a Twitter thing like a couple years ago where I went to a crypto cafe and I was able to buy coffee with crypto cafe uh, with crypto you can yeah and they had ETH mining in the back <laughs> and then a cafe in the front oh, wow. but then it became unsustainable because of the the price of ETH went low so I don't know I think it's just a cafe now that you can still pay with crypto I have to I actually have to look into that it's a uh, it's called Spill the Beans if anyone ever comes to see it in Montreal. But there's also merchants that accept Bitcoin. There's like, you can literally, I can walk down from where I live, you know, 20 minutes and there's a Bitcoin ATM. There's several in the city. Yeah. There's like, um, you know, there's posts for Bitcoin where you can buy it mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think it's just become more regulated in Canada and more accessible. And yeah. And were you always into tech? too or is that also kind of new when you learn about blockchain no i've always been into tech so it's easy for you to adopt like the language and i guess you're right i i've worked on several projects with like it you know involving building architecture mm -hmm. and like data so personally i feel like it was not a stretch to understand just a different database like that's what it is. Yeah, you're right, like it is. Blockchain's a secure, decentralized database. So all you're doing, all I'm doing is taking the knowledge I have from years of experience and like working with developers. Um so yeah, no, for me I guess it's it was an easier transition maybe than for other mm -hmm. people. And I studied business, I had, you know, background in finance, economics. Oh right, yeah, you're hitting all the points of what cryptocurrency and blockchain are trying to solve. So it just made sense to you. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah, it is kind of funny. And I then I watched a lot of doc like after the years of, you know, my friends trying to document <laughs> me, I, I started to, you know, read the, my books, I, I got to meet some authors from the space, like, um, you know, it's, it's been great. It's been a great journey. You never like, you never know who you're going yeah. to meet. And I just feel like the space really opens doors for some people. And how many conferences have you been? You said? If you can count. I don't know. I'll have to count <laughs> back. Yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah, I just went to the North American uh, Bitcoin mm -hmm. conference in Miami. Okay, nice. And that was really good. Yeah, they had like Mark Cuban there and then they had a really good panel on space. And I was like, wow, I'm never, I never cease to be amazed. When I think like the space has moved and yep. you've done a lot, then you have like, wow, another, like, it's really, I feel like it's fascinating, really. And I mean, now that, you know, you're obviously growing your business, um, 
becoming more of an influencer, being more of a speaker, present presenter. Has that also been something you've been like, actually enjoying? Or were you always kind of more of a reserved person? You kind of were just forced into this, into this position. Um, I didn't even know what an influencer <laughs> was until like uh, I went to Toronto and I, I asked some people, I'm like, so what do you do? And they're like, I'm an influencer. <laughs> That's my job. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and then the girl's like, oh, I have. 20,000 it was crypto model she's like I have like 20,000 followers on Instagram so they invited me to this event and I was like oh okay cool that's a thing wow didn't know didn't know it like I opened my account for like the purpose of like being part of the community mm -hmm. in a way you know um but then at that conf I used to also do photography I I photographed like Larry King cool. and I I got to photograph Charles Hoskinson and a lot of people were at the conference and the thing is when you pay for a photographer you know it's going to take them like a day or two to get back to you with yeah. the photos whereas i was working for myself so i just like went on photoshop and changed the photos and next thing i knew i had like three hundred thousand views right wow. so it kind of happened like that and then i uh met also someone in new york uh cody who's an influencer and he said and then i met ken so they were doing that and I was like, okay, I guess I could do that. Like, I guess, like, I guess I <laughs> might as it, well, you know, and, and I'm like, if it gets me into conferences, like, why not? I remember I snuck into a conference too, but now I'm friends with the, with the organizers. So <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but yeah, you know, like it's, uh, it's just like that, you know, sometimes you, you end up you end up doing something completely random and then you're like, oh yeah, I stumbled upon this because now I enjoy it. Now I enjoy making yeah. content. Now I, it like forces me into creativity and then that's what got me going to the cafe and mm. that's what got me doing things and always creating. And then I ended up doing content for this tour to crypto and then they, I got my post retweeted by them. And then the next thing I know, they're like on Fox TV and I'm like, how is this, <laughs> this happening? And I'm just riding my bike to work and making videos being like, hey, guys, you know, wish you all the best and whatever. <laughs> that's too funny. <laughs> no, but that's the, that's the truth, though. That's why it's so funny, yeah. right? Because I, but I was into it, of course, you know, it's, like it's I, I, I really love, I, I love it, you know. So it's, I think it's when you, it's the simplest thing. If you do what you love, you end up being successful because you're doing it out of like what you mm. really like. And then. You know, I did so much volunteer work for them because they were actually riding their bikes for like this, um, you know, women's shelter in uh, in Atlantic City. Sorry, no, it's not. It's in Atlanta. I'm confused. It's my first conference versus like this organization. And, you know, at the end, they send, ended up sending me all this free swag. And they're like, if you ever want to join the team, nice. let us know. And it was just like, you know, you just end up meeting amazing people and having a really good time. And. Yeah, it's, uh, you learn so, I feel like what I do now is I read a mm -hmm. lot. I'm a big reader. And now I feel like I can go to a conference and I can learn just so much from the people that are there. It's so practical. Conferences, Yeah, I really recommend I've them. only been to one and I'm going to ETH Denver. That's coming up, so it's exciting. But Oh, there's a lot of people going. I can connect you. Please do, yeah. I love meeting people as many as I can, just like. It's fun because yeah, like, like like you and many other people, there's so many people creating amazing work in the blockchain industry. I'm like, this is what I want to see what's going on. I don't want to see charts. I want to see people building and working together. It's the most exciting thing about this space. And I feel like that's always hidden from mainstream. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there are people who do care about the community yeah. as well. You know, it's a mix. So it depends. There's the people who are here for the short term and then there's the people who are here for the long term. So it depends who you're interacting with. Uh, I mean, I can connect you with, yeah, like I'll definitely connect you with the people I know and I and they've been in the space for for a hot minute. Awesome. So I feel like they'll still be here for the long term. I yeah. mean, it's at the conference, I met someone who I met at my first conference. And he's like, oh, you have more followers than me now. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's so funny. And then we went to have ice cream in Miami. Awesome. And it was just like, yeah, 
And then he's like, I got into space since then. I was like, yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> you, you never, never know, know, right? You never know where people end up. So, so then uh, now that I guess, what is like your favorite or like hopes to see application usage of blockchain? In, like what industry or some some reason where you thought, okay, this is what blockchain needs to solve as fast as possible. We kind of already have money solved. So what would be the next thing? Well, I think blockchain, in my opinion, will be a, we're not even using it to anywhere where it could mm -hmm. be. So I think like one of the things that I would hope to see is the transparency. So transparent spending, transparent um, use of money, transparency overall. I think another that's really important to me. Another aspect that's really important to me is sustainability. So how do we yeah. make our system sustain? And that's not just like environmental. I'm talking about systems, communities, anything in general. Um, supply chains, you know, sustainable mm -hmm. supply chains. You can use that concept throughout. So I think for me, the interest is like going full circle. And right now I feel like Every, a lot of things are disjointed, like compliance, airports, like government. Everybody's got their own database, and then there are risk of security. So, like, why aren't we all working together? Why aren't we doing things together? And it's like, I think, and my hope is, like, even, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Ben Gortzel. He's got great speeches. I highly, highly recommend them. He's a guy who has this Sophia robot. Oh, okay, yeah. And he's always saying, let's train the robots to be nicer than we are to each other, basically. Because <laughs> he's like, look at how we treat animals. Would we want AI to treat us like this? What That's is true. The That's information a real worry. We're sent? Yeah, what is the information we are sending to the world? So I think now when you're having machine learning, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and all these things, I think the important thing is, where are you putting your money? What is it doing for society? I'm, I really uh, feel passionate about social mm -hmm. impact. And of course, now you can quantify things. So strategy of the commons and economics is what's the price you put on like water? What's the price you put on other things? Rainforest. I spoke to someone at the conference who's like working on like making it. I know Canada, I just found out, has a fund that helps people to, you know, repopulate forests. Oh. You know, because they can quantify things and they can measure them and then they can show that or you can this or for social impact, how much water is a company using versus another one? Are they being sustainable about it? Yeah, or not? this is all transparent, which is yeah, you're right. Something we're missing so much from and instead of trying to like investigate and fight and have people tear up records, we can have it there and have them held accountable for anything that's wrong. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um so now that you're in the i guess more heavily in the crypto space blockchain space it's, i know it's like a 24 7 industry so it's hard to take a break what does justina do for fun what's what's like a hobby outside of crypto other than reading that's we know a good read question <laughs> <laughs> i like to go up the mountain i like to go by the canal i like to go skating so like ice skating or like rollerblading anything, like sk ice nice. skating ice skating canada were like you know winter for <laughs> four months so i like to go skating uh we have the largest open door skating rink in the world which is the auto the canal in ottawa huh. and uh and yeah in the summer there's a lot open so you can really enjoy the outdoors here i like that yeah because especially now and with covid like we're crammed in all day on the computer, just looking at things. So going outside for a walk and going outside for just, yeah, like skiing or something, it's amazing. I love like just going out and clearing my head and like breathing in fresh air for at least a half hour. Otherwise it gets so stuffy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now that, uh, yeah, again, you're in the crypto space a lot. What is something that's a pet peeve of yours in crypto? <laughs> I think people turning it into a religion. Yeah, I wrote an article about that one. That's a good like, one. Like, like seriously, you know, we're already like divided in the world enough about certain things. I'm not like 
I'm not here to preach to anyone about it. So for me, the important thing is let's all try to collaborate and work together. And I may not agree with you. Maybe you're, I don't like your ecosystem because the transactions are too slow. It breaks down, but that's your system, whatever. <laughs> I can use another one. You know what yep. I mean? Um, so yeah, I think it's like, again, we're bringing the stuff from the old world into like the new world. And so for me, it's like, sometimes that's the thing when you meet people and they're like, oh no, I, I can't. And I'm all about interoperability. How do we have an API and how do we all talk to each other? Mm -hmm. I just want people to be able to communicate and talk. And if you have a better system, it's a better system. But it's kind of like, yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's right now we're in like an information overload. There's a lot of blockchains. Yeah. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of projects. And it's like there's a new thing happening every. So you just have to like focus. I think for me, that's what I do. I focus and then I'm like, OK, I'm going to focus on this because this resonates with me. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And if people want to work on other things, I don't care. Let them be because that's their choice. That's a funny thing, too. Like in the beginning of crypto, blockchain, like everyone was very cooperative and wanting to work together. Like, oh, blockchain is going to save us all. We're all going to start working together and make mm -hmm. these amazing transitions in the world. But now as people started investing all their money into it and trying to just straight up talk down on other blockchains just so their bag can be pumped up. It's like you said, or bringing things from the old world world to the new world. But another thing to remember is also, you know, blockchains are created by humans. It's marketed by humans. Humans are behind everything still. It's, it might be a, an awesome computer program, but it's hard to change the culture around it in total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. So I think like we'll have to see how things progress. I'm hoping that we become fourth dimensional. <laughs> yeah. Me too. And just, you know, um, and I think maybe that's a, sh a paradigm that we have to mm -hmm. shift. There's something that has to unite us all. There is. Otherwise, we get polarized, you know? Yeah, it's all like, yeah, exactly. And it happens so uh, unsuspectingly, just comes in and all of a sudden it feels like we're polarized. Uh, so, what are, so now, yeah, you're in Women, uh, women in Blockchain Canada. And how has that been with you? How many, uh, I guess, people have asked, like how many women have came to you and asked about, hey, I've been trying to learn more about blockchain, but I didn't know where to start. What is your first pitch? Like, awesome, like if someone's interested in this. How do you attract them in? Yeah, like uh, that happens quite often. You know, we get inquiries on the website or I get, People asking me things on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, Facebook, different platforms. And I think I just say, you know, like, let's uh, come to our events. If they're a great place to learn. We, before COVID, we used to have them way more often. And I think now that we've had COVID, I've kind of slowed down on the events mm -hmm. front. And I've decided to kind of shift the focus um, into building in the background on the research side and creating partnerships and collaborations. But I think that will be starting back up again and um, maybe not physically, but still virtually for the moment. But I think like at the end of the day, I always say just, you know, you will end up coming to the event then you'll end up meeting different people. You'll end up having places to look. You can look at our, you know, that's that's what we do. We're very event like it's very events focused. Come to the event and see and meet people and like get the introduction, you know, and then the topics we cover. Um, and we'll be covering, will be related to, I think, many interests for women Nice. because a lot of, there's been studies done, like women don't just, from what I've read anyway, it's not just about the money. It's also about the impact that it's making on yeah. society as a whole. So we try to make our events focused on like, okay, look at the use cases of blockchain around these things. That's awesome. And yeah, I mean, it's exactly what it should be about. It's not about the money, it's about the use cases. And so say if um, blockchain never existed, what do you think you'd mm -hmm. be doing in life? Where would you be in life today? More. I think I'm, my, I'm just a connector mm -hmm. for people. So it doesn't really matter what it is. 
I'm a, I like to connect, I like to build, and I like to be creative. So whether it's blockchain or not, I've been doing that. And that's what I still do, you know? So yeah, I mean, I've always been the person who likes to network. I would go to different events even before having this organization. I was always kind of involved in community work, uh, even throughout, you know, high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and university, like I remember I went and I was on clubs and I used to be like the, you know, I don't know if you guys ever had like on your system, the people who announced oh, yeah, in the yeah. morning. Yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and I, even in, in university, I was always like doing volunteer nice. work. Uh, I was, you know, it actually in management information systems. Wow. So that's awesome. And yeah, I guess that made it really easy for you. And mm-hmm. then in management information systems and the entrepreneurs gotcha. club. So I guess like this is like a marriage of the two. Exactly. It's just like your sweet spot in life where it's kind of like everything you've been good at and been working on is made made the career for yourself. So it's finally here, which is awesome. Yeah, you know what's mm-hmm. funny? I organized a, an event with a speaker like 10 years ago when I was in university. <clears throat> Marianne Massad, she's a Fortune 500 company nice. owner. And I had her come in as a speaker during university for uh, L Wine and Cheese, which is like woman wine and uh, cheese, like promoting women. So it's so funny, right, um, that this ends up coming back again. So last year when we did International Women's Day, I had her in as a speaker because like it was still relevant. It's like, yeah, I moved <laughs> on 10 years later, but I'm like, okay come to this event because you're still a woman and you're still in technology and i just did like a you know um did an event focusing on like resilience during covid and so it wasn't even like a oh this is a woman in blockchain event this is more like how do you keep resilience in difficult times yeah it's tough because yeah this is the true test of that exactly and i wish i was there to learn more too myself i i i can send you the link we recorded it on zoom on YouTube, yeah, it's awesome. there. Um, so, I guess uh, more about you know women in blockchain. What are some of the more uh, challenges that you've had developing this nonprofit? Uh, I think we can go into that, but I don't want to go too yeah, much go into ahead. it. I think First thing it's that like, comes to your mind. I think it's like when you're working with um, sometimes volunteers, it's like. I guess the, motivation, the commitment and the motivation and things like that. But I think like now it's, uh, I've really had to work on myself. And that's, I think, the true challenge when you end up doing leadership where people are not mm-hmm. paid. Then you're like, oh man, this is like way harder. Cause I do management for pay and then this. And I'm like, well, this is like <laughs> another, this is a whole other yeah. bag. And, uh, but, you know, I think it's just really challenged me as a person to grow on like a personal level. Like it really pushed me to be kinder. It's pushed me to be more gentle. It's like, yeah, it's really, I think in a way you end up molding yourself to the environment as a human being. We're so adaptable, but people think we're not. But it's like, yeah. you know, like we're two years into the pandemic. People are very adaptable. Exactly. And so yeah, I think it's just caused me to grow. Nice. And is this the first com- company that you founded? Uh, as a non for profit, nice. yes, that's correct. Awesome. And what are the other companies that you founded? No, it's more like I o- I also did photography. Okay. So gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Great. Now, I guess one of my uh, last questions, I'd like to ask. What is your favorite wholesome crypto moment? Well, this one right now, isn't the present moment the best moment? (laughs) That's true. Thank you. (laughs) The present moment is the best moment. It's where the only time you're actually experiencing something, everything else is either a memory Mm -hmm. or imagination. Mm -hmm. Nice. A good answer. Thank you. Well, Justina, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I mean, loved having you here. I loved what you're working on. I'm excited to see you keep going. I'll make sure to share everything about you to everyone that I know.
Perfect. And I can connect you with Omar and you can you guys can go grab a beer oh, nice. or whatever in, in Boston. Perfect. Thank you so much. See everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.